So we're going to have a little look at the ethmoid bone. I've got a whole bunch of different models because it's another one of those very central bones in the skull which are quite difficult to get at and quite difficult to get to grips with exactly where they are. And we looked at the sphenoid bone, that's got a similar problem. The ethmoid bone's a little bit diddier. So we'll look at where it is, the bones that are nearby, the holes that go through it, uh, the lumpy bumpy bits on it, and the, the spaces that it separates or potentially links up. In fact, I have, this is a bit of a prototype. I have been building a, it's like a, it's a 3D, 3D printed plastic cubist model of the nasal cavity and that's the ethmoid bone and the idea is the students will get these parts and put them all together and get the concept about where the ethmoid bone is in relation to the other bones. So maybe we can use that. First of all then, let's orient you. Um, skull, take off the skull cap. There we go. So if we look inside the skull, the ethmoid bone is here. It stands out because we can see this depression. We can see lots of tiny little holes running through it. Um, and it's in this, this is the um, anterior cranial fossa here. It's within the anterior cranial, cranial fossa. Now it's also forming kind of the roof of the nasal cavity up in there. And it's also forming the, the medial walls of the orbit. So it's very, very central, but it's very difficult to see all that on a plain white skull. Um, incidentally, got all these little holes running through it. Uh, the, the, the ancient Greek word for sieve is ethmos. Um, and then oid shaped, sieve shaped. If the ethmoid bone is a sieve. Did the ancient Greeks have sieves? Um, so that's where it gets its name from anyway. Don't forget that all these ancient languages have kind of been uh, repurposed uh, layer stage, Latin and Greek. Um, right, so ethmoid bone. If we look at a mid-sagittal section, brain, brain stem, there's the pituitary, there's the sphenoid sinus, so this is the sphenoid bone here. This bit here, that's the ethmoid bone. So the ethmoid bone then is in the midline between the nasal cavity and the brain. And in fact, it's arching around. So it's also forming some of the walls of the nasal cavity up here and the midline bit. All right. So if we pick up this more colorful skull, what can we see? Pop off the vertebrae. Do I really want to go in there? Not really. <laughs> Here's the frontal bone in this mustard yellow color. Um, so Here's the frontal bone here, which means that most of the anterior cranial fossa is made up of the frontal bone. These wings here are the sphenoid that we looked at in the sphenoid video. So the ethmoid bone here is surrounded by frontal bone and meets the sphenoid bone posteriorly. Um, here's the maxilla. And you can see the sphenoid bone in the back of the orbit. So if we look in the orbit, the yellow bone that we're seeing in the medial wall of the orbit, that's the ethmoid bone. And then if we look inside the nose, if we look into the nasal cavity, we can see that most of the bone in there is yellow. So most of that bone is the ethmoid bone. And it's forming well, in fact, we've got two bones in there because we've got the inferior nasal conchi as well, but we'll come to that. Um, so the, the ethmoid bone then, as I'm trying to demonstrate in my model, is in the midline and it's forming, if I take, so you can see through there, that's the nasal cavity with the nasal septum splitting the nose into left and right sides. And if we take the ethmoid bone off, we can see that it's forming that sort of shape. So it's forming the walls of the nasal cavity and the roof of the nasal cavity and this perpendicular plate projects down into the nasal cavity in the midline, making up about two thirds of the nasal septum. Um, so it meets Voma. So Voma 
which we can see in here in orange. Voma is this long, slender, triangular, flat, thin bone in the midline, which is also forming part of the nasal septum, and that in life is filled in with cartilage, which gives you the rest of your nasal septum. So the perpendicular plate separating the left and right nasal cavities is part of the ethmoid bone. Now the thing that I haven't put onto my model, but that is in here are the, these conchy, these curvy bits. Anyway, right, we'll come back to those in a mo. Um, the other bones that we can see on this exploded skull, whoo! So remember, we've got the same bones in here, different color scheme, but everything's been pulled apart a little bit. There's the Voma. There's the ethmoid bone here, which does pop out. And the fact is, it's, this is multicolored in here to show the midline, that perpendicular plate, and also to show some of these other structures. Um, but that wasn't my point. My point was that the ethmoid bone, multicolored in this model, is up against the maxilla. It's also up against the voma. And we have these inferior nasal conchi here, which is next to. We have the nasolacrimal bones, which is how tears drain from the eye down into the nasal cavity through that nasolacrimal duct. So the lacrimal bone with the nasolacrimal duct, I think is the correct way to describe it. And then we've also got the nasal bones here, which are up against the ethmoid bone. So we can also see the nasal bones on here and on here. So it's a, it's a busy and complicated little area. Nasal bones, frontal bone, maxillary bone, lacrimal bone, ethmoid bone, sphenoid bone, and then as a bonus, do you remember the palatine bones? The palatine bones form the posterior part of the hard palate and they're kind of long, sticky, uppy bones. Those also push up against the, the, uh, the ethmoid bones. The ethmoid bone is surrounded by a number of bones uh, and given the face, it's not too surprising and it's also its central nature, of course. Hopefully you've got a good sense of whereabouts the ethmoid bone is now. Um, let's talk about the spaces that it links and the holes and things within it. So it clearly then links the cranial cavity or rather separates the cranial cavity from the nasal cavity. The reason I say links is because um, what we see here is the cribriform plate. So this superior part of the ethmoid bone here, the, this plate is filled with lots of tiny holes and the cribriform plate is filled with lots of little tiny holes because one of the cranial nerves runs here. So we have a look at Big Head. So there's the pituitary fossa. Oh look, you can see there's the frontal bone. So there's the ethmoid bone there, and this is the olfactory nerve. This is cranial nerve one. And the olfactory nerve, of course, is responsible for smell. And we see the olfactory nerve run anteriorly from the brain to then kind of sit as a bulb on either side over the cribriform plate. And then through all of those little holes, it sends nerves through to the nasal cavity um, to innovate the nasal mucosa, and that's how you detect smell. Um, so that's why the holes are all there. The, um, whoop, the ridge of bone in between the two sides is called the crista galli, literally uh, cockerel's, um, what do you call it? Crista crest, the cockerel's crest. You know, the cockerel's got the red crest sticking up, it's named after that. Now, from what you know about bones and lumpy bumpy bits, if a bone's got a lumpy bumpy bit, it's there for a reason, usually because something attaches to it. Can you think what attaches here? It's the dura mater. So that false cerebri, that vertical piece of dura mater that separates the two hemispheres, that attaches there. That's why there's a lump there, all right? Uh, anteriorly to it, there's sometimes a foramen cecum. Um, and the foramen cecum, if you find one, it's just a little hole that allows... Oh, that one's got one, look there, see? 
So there's a foramen cecum on this skull, and that's a hole that's allowing small veins to pass through, what get called emissary veins. So the ethmoid bone separates the cranial cavity from the nasal cavity, but also links the two via the olfactory nerve. And we should talk about what happens if the bone gets damaged later as well. Okay, right, more bony features then. We have then inadvertently talked about most of the lumpy bony bits. Um, the orbital plate, is the part of the ethmoid bone forming the medial wall. The medial sheet forms the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. And it's not just a flat thing sheet, there's, there's quite a bit of width to it. And that width is hollow, it's filled with, with air cells. Now even if I, it's such a tricky bone to study because even if I take this, this bone out and we look at it in isolation, it just looks like a kind of a, an oblong cuboidal lump. Um, but hopefully you can see there's a little bit of, a little bit of width to it. Then, then in the nasal cavity, what we see if we look into the nose, is we see that midline nasal septum formed by the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone we've already talked about, or partly formed by. But then we also see these bits of bone sticking out. Now these are the conchi. So there are superior and middle conchi on either side, and then there are inferior nasal conchi. And that's why I haven't yet modelled on this, and I should, I should add to that before we, we give this to the students. This is going to be in lots of different colours, by the way, so it should be a, a fun thing for the students to work with when we're doing it. Anyway, the conchi then, so the superior nasal conchi pop out of the roof of the ethmoid bone, the middle nasal conchi pop out of the walls and they give a little bit of a curved pro projection of bone which are then covered in mucosa. What seems to be happening here is an increase in surface area as we see elsewhere in the body and the advantage of this is it makes it easier to warm and moisten the air as we breathe in through our noses to protect the mucous membranes lining our respiratory trees. So the superior and middle nasal conchi those curvy bits are parts of the ethmoid bone, but the inferior nasal concha is a separate bone. It's its own bone, which, <laughs> pink maxilla, the bones have also got the names in, cool, huh? Uh, the inferior nasal concha are separate bones there, right? Another part of the puzzle. Now, something else that also gets mentioned, I said that the ethmoid bone butts up against the sphenoid bone and we said that the sphenoid, bo uh, the sphenoid bone has a sphenoid sinus. Well that sphenoid sinus drains into the sphenoethmoidal recess. So do you see how there's the ethmoid bone, there's the sphenoid bone. We've got a little recess up there. That's another another terminology, another term, another structure you might come across and that's all that means is that recess up there is where the sphenoid sinus empties into. So what about ethmoidal sinuses? Are there air cells and sinuses in the ethmoid bone? Well, yes. And much of this block of bone is, is hollow. So it's filled with a number of air cells, a number of small sinuses. Um, even the, the, the conchi have also, they're also hollow and filled with sinuses. Um, and these get called ethmoidal air cells and the ethmoidal labyrinths. So the ethmoidal labyrinths are, you know, labyrinths of spaces inside this bone. So if you take the bone out, it's quite complicated to look at. If you were to cut sections through, it looks quite complicated as well. It looks quite complex on x-ray, but essentially it's, 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 it's that bit in the center, that center there. That's the most important thing is to get to grips with that, that central idea. So what happens if you damage the ethmoid bone then? Well, because it connects the cranial cavity to the nasal cavity, um, if you damage the ethmoid bone, you're likely to create a link between the cranial cavity and the nasal cavity. Because the brain is floating in cerebrospinal fluid, there's a chance then that cerebrospinal fluid might leak from the cranial cavity into the nasal cavity, and you'd see a constant drip, drip, drip of a clear liquid from the nose. So you might want to watch out for this sort of thing after you know, a road traffic collision where somebody's cracked their head on the steering wheel, where somebody's had a blow to the face and that sort of thing. Now the other thing is, 
because the ethmoid bone is also forming the wall of the orbit, there's a potential link between the nasal cavity and the orbit. And the orbit is tightly packed with stuff, right? So if the ethmoid bone fractures and links those two spaces, then there's a possibility of air passing into the orbital cavity and getting an, was it an uh, orbital pneumo, an orbital emphysema, that's the thing, isn't it? Orbital emphysema, something like that. Um, so it's very, very central and linking those spaces. I keep saying central because that's the key idea I'm trying to get across here. And that's it, that's the ethmoid bone. So hopefully you're more comfortable with where it is, what it does, what it's next to, um, and that sort of thing there. All right, good, right. See you guys next week then.